Hey guys, how's everybody doing? I'm back today for a Vinyl Finds video. Um, got about, I don't know, 20 or so albums to show. Some pretty good ones here. Um, most of these are uh, online finds, uh, Discogs, Amazon, and maybe just a, a few uh, record store finds, okay? Uh, so a really good mix. Uh, this one here, FYC, Fun Young Cannibals. I've shown uh, these guys before, and this is actually a, an album I was really uh, pleased to, to get. Um, this is a remix album. It's called The Raw and the Remix, which is taking its name from The Raw and the Cooked, which was the Cannibals' um, second album that had big hits like She Drives Me Crazy, Good Thing, I'm Not the Man I Used to Be, Don't Look Back. Uh, and this is something that I had on cassette way back in the 80s. And uh, it has uh, songs from The Raw and The Cooked and also uh, uh, Johnny Come Home, which was from the Cannibals' debut album. And uh, plenty of uh, different mixes on here. There's the She Drives Me Crazy, David Z, 12-inch version, uh, Good Thing, 12-inch version. So some, some nice alternate remixes of, uh, of The Cannibals' uh, first two albums, but focusing mainly on The, the Raw and The Cooked. Next we have UB40, uh, Little Bag of Rhythm. Uh, this is, um, I guess, an EP uh, which features the UB40 song, I Got You Babe, which is the cover, obviously, of the Sunny and Cher. Uh, UB40 did a cover of that with uh, Chrissy Hine from The Pretenders on guest vocals. And the other major track on this is um, Don't Break My Heart, which was another single uh, release popular UB40 track. So Little Bag of Rhythm, I think it's uh, five songs, about four or five songs in total. I've shown some Echo and the Bunnymen, whoops, I've shown some Echo and the Bunnymen before. Um, and this is a solo album from Ian McCulloch from Echo and the Bunnymen, his first solo album, Candleland. Uh, this was released, uh, so the Bunnymen, the first initial run, uh, they had five albums, ending with their self-titled album, which is uh, also known to fans as the Grey Album. Um, and then Ian left the band. The band continued to make one more album without him with a, with a different vocalist. Um, that fizzled out, but this is a great Ian McCulloch solo album. Uh, it features a duet with Liz Frazier of the Cocteau Twins, and this is still very faithful to the um, to the Bunnymen sound, uh, minus uh, Will Sargent's excellent guitar. So this is a highly recommended Ian McCulloch solo album. Speaking of the Bunnymen, a new release from this year is this Echo and the Bunnymen album. Let me get the title correct. The Stars, the Oceans, and the Moon. This is the Bunnymen, which are really down now, down now to two members, Ian McCulloch and Will Sargent, the two principal members. But um, they've decided to redo um, some of their older hits. Um, Rescue, The Cutter, Lips Like Sugar, some really big hits. Um, and also include two brand new tracks on this. So I mainly got this for the two new tracks, but the, the versions of the old hits are, are pretty good. I mean, they're, they're fantastic songs, um, but you know, there's other compilations that include the original versions, which in my opinion are much better, um, but there's still decent tracks here. The, the main difference is I would say Ian's vocals are much better on the original tracks and the guitar is more prominent on the original tracks but still if you're a big Bunnyman fan um, this is a good uh, collection to have double LP and again it's the only way to get these two brand new tracks which are pretty good songs they're not up there with the classics but they fit well on this uh, on this compilation Uh, another band that I've shown many times before is Pavement. I was really uh, heavily into them back in the 90s. Pavement had five albums that they released back then and then they broke up. And then Steve Malcolmus, the lead singer of Pavement and the, and the leader and principal writer, guitar player, um, 
he made this solo album, which is just a self-titled solo album, and I've been wanting to get this for quite a while. Finally, it was uh, reissued uh, earlier this year, and uh, I, I still think this is Steve Malcolmus's um, best solo album. Although all of them are, are really good. His newest solo album is in my top five uh, albums of, of this year, so he's still put it, putting out some quality stuff. Then we have Weather Report, which I've shown before many times. This is Weather Report's um, debut album, which I've been wanting to get also for quite some time. I was, almost went for a reissue of this, which is much more costly than um, this used copy that I found on Discogs. And uh, this, like I said, this is their debut album, um, still with the original bassist Miroslav Vitus and uh, obviously being led by Joe Vinyl and uh, Wayne Shorter who worked with Miles Davis and this album is very much in the Miles Davis uh, school of fusion, uh, that early uh, fusion sound which Weather Report eventually went on to change a little bit and became a little bit more or much more commercial um, when they added uh, Jaco Pistorius to, to the mix but this is an, uh, an excellent album for uh, fusion fans. Leonard Cohen, New Skin for the Old Ceremony. This is Leonard Cohen's fourth album, I believe, and includes some, um, some of my favorite Len Leonard Cohen songs. Uh, Lover, 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 I've always been a big fan of that song. I, I first got to know that uh, song through a cover version from Ian McCulloch, who I showed earlier. On his second solo album, he did a great cover version of that song, but um, I equally love the original. Um, other songs on here that I really like, uh, Chelsea Hotel Number 2 is on here, Field Commander Cohen. Um, this, is a, this is an excellent Leonard Cohen album, and I was really pleased to get this one. This is Neil Young, The White Album. No, this is Neil Young, Ocean Beach. Uh, I believe that's the name of it. No, On the Beach. Sorry about that. On the Beach. So I, I ordered this through Discogs and uh, then it came like this without a cover and I ended up getting a refund for it, but the vinyl still plays excellent. I mean, obviously I would have preferred to get to have the cover with this, but, um, you know, end up getting it for free at the end of the day. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy about that. This is a uh, you know, I, th I think some of you guys have shown this album before, and uh, it's up there with Neil Young's best. So on the beach. Then I have a triple live set from Jeff Beck at the Hollywood Bowl. Uh, this, I believe, was released last year, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. Um, triple LP set, and this covers the entirety of Jeff Beck's career up until his most recent album, Loud Hailer, which he made with um, female vocalist, um, I think her name was Rosie Bones. Um, there's three tracks from that album on here, but this goes all the way back covering the Yardbirds. There's um, several Yardbirds songs in here, I believe about five Yardbirds. Then it goes into his Jeff Beck group uh, songs, both incarnations of that group. And then it goes into his fusion uh, albums like Blow by Blow, Wired and uh, up until uh, there and back. Um, highly recommended. Great, uh, great overview of Jeff Beck's career. There's a couple of new tracks on here. Most notably, they do uh, a cover version of Prince's Purple Rain with the um, vocals from Beth Hart, who I know the name, but I don't have any of her stuff. And it's a pretty good version of that. But really, you're getting this uh, because it's covering, you know, it really shows Jeff Beck's versatility and, and the different styles of music that this guy has covered for his career. Kate Bush, Never Forever. This is Kate Bush's third album. Um, I've never owned this album before, but I knew several of the songs from this that I had on a comp and just, you know, hearing Kate Bush online and so forth. The big songs off of this um, are Babushka, which is probably my favorite 
Kate Bush song of all time, Army Dreamers and uh, Breathing. This is, um, I don't know, this is probably up there with my most favorite Kate Bush uh, albums along with uh, Hounds of Love, which I know better than this album. Uh, and I've recently ordered her album Ariel, which got reissued on... Um, on vinyl which is a pretty good album as well but in that early string of uh, Kate Bush albums this is this is right up there never forever been listening and getting a lot of Bob Dylan recently this is Bob Dylan's live album Hard Rain uh, this was released I believe in 1975 right after um, Blood on the Tracks, and it includes a lot of songs from Blood on the Tracks, but uh, as very, uh, you know, Dylan is, is known for really dismantling his songs and, and taking them apart and, and sort of doing newer, different versions of them, and, and this album is a testament to that. Uh, there's many songs on here from Blood on the Tracks where he really um, changes the songs up quite a bit, so this is a single live uh, LP from that 75 tour. Then we have a two LP set for Status Quo. Um, this is my first Status Quo um, vinyl, CD and of, of any kind. And what this is, is a, it's a comp of the first two status quo albums from back in the 60s when they were a much different group they were definitely much more of a psych uh pop psych rock kind of band on their first two albums and then they changed their sound quite a bit as most bands did as they went into the 70s um so i got a good deal on this i wasn't familiar with this stuff but this is some pretty good psych pop psych rock from uh, the late 60s Then a bit of a grail for me, Lou Reed, New York. I've had this on CD for many, many years and um, had never seen this out in the wild before and then found a nice copy on Discogs. So I'm really pleased to get this. Um, this, is, uh, what, this is probably Lou Reed's best album from the 80s. Um, it includes the songs Dirty Boulevard and Romeo and Juliet, which you might know. And uh, this is a fantastic, fantastic Lou Reed um, album. I would say it's, it's up there with his best, like uh, Transformer, Berlin, that kind of stuff. And uh, a great late period Lou Reed album. And then we have some more Dylan, Love and Theft. I've had this LP for many years on, on um, CD and I finally decided to get it uh, most recently along with Time Out of Mind and um, another album which I'm showing soon. Um, this is some amazing Dylan. I really, really love this. This might be in my top five um, Bob Dylan albums of all time. Uh, I love the songs Tweedledee and Tweedledum and uh, Mississippi, which are the first two tracks on this. Uh, Dylan is still in fine form uh, vocally on this album. This is uh, fantastic. Bob Dylan album. And then along with that, I also got Bob Dylan bringing it all back home. Um, this is the album, which I'm sure you guys know, where Dylan first went electric. He's got side one, which is the electric, and side two, which is the acoustic side. Um, the big songs off of this that you'll know, Maggie's Farm, Mr. Tambourine Man, uh, just to name a couple. Um, this is probably one of my favorites, again, in my top top five, uh, Dylan, of, um, and probably my favorite of his early albums, I think six, released in 65. And then on Record Store Day, I didn't really go out. There wasn't anything that I, that I wanted, but my brother-in-law discovered that one of our favorite bands actually was releasing uh, something on Record Store Day, and there was uh, two copies of this release that he managed to get, and it's Catherine Wheel, Like Cats and Dogs. Um, for those of you that have seen my top 20 artists, you will know that Catherine Wheel was my number eight, um, band or artists of all time. 
this is their album like cats and dogs which was released after their third album happy days and this is a collection of b-sides and this is as good if not better than uh, some of their actual studio albums uh, featured on here is a killer version of uh, pink floyd's wish you were here um, this is this is awesome this is one of the reasons why catherine wheel are one of my favorite uh, bands of all time and then two more from the same artist um, we have the dave matthews band and their new album from this year come tomorrow um, i used to be into the dave matthews band many many years ago especially on their early albums and then along the way i just you know stopped listening to them but I, I heard some clips of some of the songs from this album on YouTube, and I just thought, wow, th this is great. This is a return to form. I really like this. So I ended up uh, getting this album, and this is in my top five albums of this year. So Dave Matthews, Come Tomorrow. And to end off on a four LP set of live Dave Matthews from 1995, live at Red Rocks, um, this album was going for on Amazon for $84 Canadian, brand new. I found a used copy that was uh, rated as very good for $37, so more than 50% off there on a 4LP set. And the only reason why it was listed as used is there was no shrink wrap and there was no uh, download code, which I really don't care about anyway. So to get something that was valued at 84 for 37, like I jumped on it right away. And this is prime era Dave Matthews band. Um, so it's just, it's just, whoop, it's just a box. And then you got the four albums, uh, each in their own individual um, outer sleeves and inner sleeves. Um, this is fantastic. I've listened to this already. It sounds amazing and, and is back with the original Dave Matthews Band uh, lineup, uh, including the late uh, Leroy uh, Moore and um, Boyd Tinsley, who left the band earlier this year. So really, really happy to get this. Okay, guys, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.